In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called merge intervals. So we're given an array of intervals where intervals at i is equal to start at i and end at i. So for each interval, we're going to have our start time and the end time. And we want to merge all the overlapping intervals um, and return an array of non-overlapping intervals that cover all the intervals in the input. So here you can see we have an example of a interval where we have an overlapping between here and here, right? So you can see the end time, which is three for the first interval and the start time for the second interval is two. So there's an overlapping, we're just gonna make sure we merge them together. And at the end, we're gonna have three non, uh, three non overlapping intervals, right? So in this case, we have one to six, eight to 10, 15 to 18. And uh, also this also considered as overlapping where we have the start time of the second interval is four and the end time of the first interval is four. So in this case, what we can do is that if the end time of the first interval, right, the end time of the previous interval is not less than the, the start time of the current interval, then we want to make sure that that's considered as overlapping, right? Then we want to make sure we, we are, uh, we're removing an overlapping interval, we're merging the overlapping interval uh, if, they, if the end time is not, is not less than the start time of this, right? So at the end, we have one five. So when we deal with merge interval problems, it's very important to consider all those cases, right? We could have a couple cases here. One is that we could have a situation where this, the, the intervals are not overlapping at all. We could also have a situation where intervals uh, B is overlapping with A, right? They're overlapping each other. And you can see that the end start time of B is, is less than the end time of A, so we're overlapping. And we could also have a situation where A and B is completely overlap with each other. And there's also could be a situation where B is, uh, you know, overlapping with, uh, A is over, in B is overlapping. So A ends after B, right? So those are the test cases that we have considered when we deal with intervals. And uh, for this question specifically, like, for example, we can define if the interval is overlapping is when we, uh, when they, when they are overlapping, when the time, when the end time is bigger than the, the uh, yeah, the end time is bigger than the start time of the adjacent interval. And first, of course, we're gonna sort the array by start time, right? So that we can be able to compare with the uh, previous interval's end time with the start time of the adjacent interval. So we're gonna have those three test cases here. So there could be a situation where we have A, the end time, after we do the sorting, of course, sort the array, sort the interval by the by the uh, start time, we're gonna have our end time. In this case, it's, if it's like uh, bigger than the start time of B, right? Then we consider that's overlapping. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge them and we're gonna take the largest end time. In this case, the largest end time is B. So we're gonna have A.start and B.end, right? And we can also have this, something like this, where we have a situation where uh, A is just bigger than uh, the size of A is bigger than the size of B, right? Then we can just take A instead. So we're gonna have to check to see whoever has the largest end time, we're just gonna take the interval who have, whoever has the largest end time, right? I just say, we're gonna take the, uh, the interval that has a, uh, of course, is gonna be the previous interval for the start time. If there's overlapping, we wanna make sure we take the start time of the previous interval and the end time, we want to make sure we find the largest end time. So in this case, the largest end time is A. And if they start at the same time, then we want to make sure we take the largest end point. In this case, the end time is going to be B, right? B dot N. So we want to make sure we consider those tests, uh, those cases. So to do that, we're going to use um, a couple ways to solve this. One way we can do this is we can use a variable to keep track of the previous uh, interval, and then so that we're going to start at the first, or I should say the uh, second interval, and then we're going to compare with the previous interval. Um, if there's overlapping, we're going to basically um, merge them, right? We're going to take the interval, whoever has the largest uh, end time, whoever will be able to like add, we're basically going to have a new interval, and the the start basically is going to be the previous interval that start, and then the end the end of the interval, right, is gonna be the largest end time between the two intervals. And then at the end, we wanna make sure we do that continuously. And uh, 
adding each and every single integral onto our uh, onto our result list. So that's one way. And um, I find that way to be just a little bit complex. But we can also do it just an easier way, which we can use a stack. And basically, we're just going to like add the first interval onto our stack. And then we're just going to compare the current interval. Of course, we're going to start at the second interval. We're just going to compare with the we're going to compare the second interval, the current interval, with the top interval that we have in our stack, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a stack data structure um, to solve this problem. And time complexity in the case, because we're using sorting, we're going to have a big O of n log n. And then the, uh, the space complexity in this case is going to be big O of n. Uh, because we're going to use a uh, list to store all the intervals that were that are non-overlapping, right? So to do this in code, uh, first, what we're going to do, because the constraints is that the intervals, the length is bigger than or equal to 1. So first, we're going to define our base case. So base case. Once we define our base case, uh, we're going to sort the array, right? Sort the intervals by start time. Once we sort the interval by start time, we're going to create our stack, right? Create define stack to keep track of the, because stack is structure, we can be able to um, get the last element that we inserted onto our stack. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the stack data structure to get a top element and then compare with our current interval, right? So we're going to make sure we add at uh, first interval onto the stack, okay? And then we're going to uh, basically start to merge the intervals, right? We're going to start from the, uh, the second interval. We're going to see if we, we're going to compare the second top, uh, top interval that we have in our stack with the current interval, right? So we're going to merge interval and at the end, we want to make sure we are returning our list, okay? Which is basically we're going to convert a stack into our into our array, uh, into a two D array. And uh, first, we're going to define our base case, which is going to be if we have a situation where we're in right, which is size of the intervals is equal to one, we can pretty much just return intervals, okay? And then we're going to focus on sort the intervals by start time. So we're going to pass in intervals that we want to sort. And um, basically, we're just going to sort by start time in ascending order. So we have A and B. And then we're going to say we're going to compare with A at uh, it, uh, the start time of A with start time of B. And we want to do this. In, we want to sort the intervals in ascending order. Then we're going to define our stack. And our stack is has a type of integer array. Stack. Okay. Then we're going to first uh, basically insert the first intervals onto our stack. So we're going to say stack.add intervals at zero. Okay. And then to merge intervals, we're going to start from index one, which is the second intervals. I is less than n, i plus plus. And uh, what we're going to do is first, we're going to get our previous interval. So our previous interval, which is going to be the top element that we have in our stack. So we're going to say stack.peak. Okay. And then we're going to also have our current interval, which is going to be intervals at i, right? Which give us the current interval. Once we have our previous and the current, first, we're going to check to see, check if they are overlapping. Right, so if they're overlapping, then we want to make sure that uh, we're just going to add the current. Uh, we're just going to update the previous interval. Uh, it's end time. Whoever has the largest end time, we're going to um, update that, and then we're just going to add a, update that onto our stack. Right, uh, that's that's going to be one case. And if we have a situation where they're not overlapping to each other, then we are going to make sure. Uh, we're going to just add the current interval, right? The current interval uh, onto our stack. So in this case, if um, previous at one, right, is less than current at zero, if, if they're not overlapping to each other, 
uh, we're just going to say stack dot add curved. Okay. And uh, else if they are overlapping, right, then what we're going to do is we're going to say um, uh, previous at one, right, is equal to the maximum to the maximum between current at one or the previous at one. Right, so we want to make sure we update the, the end time with the previous interval with the largest end time. Okay, and um, yeah, it, pretty much we're just going to continue to do that until we merge uh, all the overlapping intervals. And at the end, we are we're going to return um, stack dot to array. Right, we want to convert that into array, and uh, it's going to be new integer. The size is going to be the stack dot size. And uh, we're going to have two elements in the interval, the start time and the end time. So now let's try to run our code. And let's try to submit. And here you can see this is how we um, solve this merge interval problem. So again, the time complexity in this case is going to be in login because we are we're using sorting to sort the uh, interval. Um, and the space complexity in this case is going to be linear because we have a stack that just pretty much adding all the um, um, non-overlapping tools onto our stack, right? So there you have it, and thank you for watching.